geared for you to think. I'm not in the closet. I'm for the first time in our recording experiences. I am not in the closet. At least the usable recording. <laughs> right. Because we definitely tried recording in a car. We tried recording at your kitchen table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With little ones on our lap. That was fun. That was. Oh, so welcome, goddess. <laughs> it's so good to be here with you again. Welcome, everyone, to Between Two Ovaries. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 7. How do you feel? Episode 7. Episode 7. It just feels so good. I feel like it's still so fresh and new, but at the same time, like we've come a really long way and we've learned a lot and we've grown. My gosh, we've grown so much since we first began. And I'm so happy that we're continuing this and we're having fun with it. And we're getting such amazing feedback from listeners. Mm -hmm. The feedback is my favorite because I feel like the reason we started this podcast, it's showing. And I don't need it to show for anyone. Let me see if I can figure out how to properly say this, but it just matters to me. It doesn't have to matter to anyone else other than you and me because we're doing this together and this is our our baby. I know we have many more babies to birth together and through from our collective. Yeah, this was our first baby. This is the first baby we officially put out to the public. So that's exciting. It's so exciting. That just like gave me all the feels because I mean, at least for me being like a birth junkie, I never went through pregnancy with like a really good close friend of mine. And when I met you, I remember having thoughts like throughout our friendship of just like, oh, it would have been so amazing to like have birth babies together. And so, you know, we're not going to birth physical humans together, but here we are, we're birthing amazing life babies together. And it's so exciting. It's so fun. It is so much fun. I love you. I love our collective. I love Feralina, who's a part of our collective. And just being able to creatively flow with each other and really picking apart pieces that we can take on to make these babies actually come to life. And yeah, definitely no physical human babies anymore. And you gave me a huge womb smile from ovary to ovary when you said that you thought that it would have been cool to birth babies together because yeah, that would have been... Now that I'm past that phase in my life, I don't want any more physical babies. I just want to be there for my close friends who are having babies and just kind of almost <laughs> in a weird way, like looking ahead towards my crone phase of my life. And for our listeners who don't know what the crone phase, it's when a woman is more towards menopause um, and no longer bleeding or, you know, heading into that phase season of their life. That's just kind of the wise woman phase and yeah, I don't know why that came up, but it did. I look forward to that phase as well. I'm not rushing this season of life that I'm in. I really love bleeding, and a part of me feels scared even or, like, sad to think of the idea of not bleeding since I've established such an amazing relationship with my bleed. But at the same time, like, oh, that just – the crone season of life just feels so, like – powerful and magical and rad so I am looking forward to that absolutely so I'm right there with you mm -hmm. all amazingness which makes me think like what was our topic again <laughs> just kidding I know what our topic is <laughs> body hair body hair everyone body hair body hair body hair everyone has body hair Everyone, even the baldest person, has at least one hair in their butt. <laughs> <laughs> Why the butt? <laughs> <laughs> because even even if, if you think they're bald, you know, like you don't see anything, they know that's there. They know. 
That's true. My but uncle I- is bald, but he has the hairiest arms. Mm. See? There you go. It's somewhere. Just yeah. Gotta find it. Search it. <laughs> <laughs> So the reason I decided to text you about that topic was because I'm back in this like limbo phase of, okay, where am I with my body hair? I thought, and goes to show again, healing is not linear. And I wrote somewhere in my journal, like, it's actually this healing is this funky dance where you've got the steps all good and you're, you're, you're grooving and moving. And then all of a sudden there's this kickball change and it throws you off balance and then you have to start all over or, you know, just reconsider your steps or practice. And I just love dancing. So that's how I relate healing with dancing because it's not linear. It's constantly throwing me off balance healing. And so I was really good with my body hair. And then I found my, I like discovered my sexuality and started grooming myself And then now I'm just burnt out on grooming (laughs) because it's like a constant thing that never ends. It's like laundry and dishes. (laughs) For real. Yep. So that's, that's where last night I was grooming myself and I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't take this right now. And maybe it could just be the phase of my cycle that I'm in, but I was just like, I'm done. I'm just going to tell my partner, Hey, deal with the fuzziness. And, and then my brain started going into this like random, like, well, dogs are fuzzy and we still love them and pet them and there's no big deal. So (laughs) trying to (laughs) affirm myself for having body hair. (laughs) It's so like sad in a way that we have to like go out of our way to validate not wanting to groom ourselves you know Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. I don't know I still kind of go through it sometimes and it's been a couple years since I stopped shaving my legs and my armpits and it's like exhausting it's Mm -hmm. exhausting to groom it's for a little while after you stop grooming it's exhausting to think about why you're not grooming yourself anymore (laughs) like being self-conscious and getting interesting looks and things like that. Mm-hmm. The but looks for sure. I, I recently met another mom who does not shave her legs. And it was a very exciting moment for me because I'm always the only one with body hair in group settings. And so that was lovely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with body hair and then less head hair. When you first trimmed your hair down really low did you start also getting like weird looks yeah I think I've gotten weirder looks since buzzing my head and the biggest thing that comes up for me is like am I gonna be harassed for like wanting like portraying myself as wanting to be more like a man or something like that you know because I have body hair but then I decided to cut my hair extremely short and so you know it's just those like weird thoughts that come into your head that you think other people are thinking when nobody could be thinking that it's interesting because when I see women with buzzed heads or just super short hair I'm just like oh my gosh you are such a hot human being like (laughs) you know yet when I'm walking around with short hair and body hair I'm just like oh Am I making people uncomfortable? You know, it's why, why, why? And then I have to put myself in check. Like, come on, like you're turning people on right now. (laughs) (laughs) But that is very interesting. I was going to also mention that how, isn't it interesting that we start thinking these weird thoughts that potentially may be in other people's heads, but very well at the same time may not even be crossing their minds. For example, like the first weekend that I stopped wearing a bra, I had that incident at Target where the guy just like saw my very bright nipples and he just wouldn't stop staring. And and one of the first thoughts was, oh my goodness, what if somebody comes up to me and starts yelling at me to put on a bra and how offensive my nipples are? And then I'm like, what the, why would they even do that? But somehow my brain thought maybe that was something that could come up and how would I deal with that? That hasn't happened yet in the six months. So I think I'm clear. 
Yeah. I think of those situations too, just people being like verbally abusive, but I really don't think it's going to happen. I really don't. I think it has to do too, probably with social media. Like we're so used now to people hiding behind screens and like attacking where I don't think happens as often. And then if you see that happening in real life through social media, they're very like, you know, rare cases. They're just getting all of this light through a screen. You know what I mean? So like how often are people really being complete assholes about people's appearances? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's a good question. It could also be like where I live. Right. Right. Yeah. And you bring up a great point because that definitely, I mean, we live in Southern California. We have Venice where you can find everything on the spectrum or Hollywood where you can find everything on the spectrum. Yeah. So it's just, it's, I'd be interested in hearing from some of our listeners on, um, specifically on their journey with body hair, if you've embarked on that journey already and just your experience with it, if you've had any experiences out in public that maybe people have called you out or something, or maybe not, maybe you've had a smooth sailing. That would be awesome to hear about too. But I did have a question for you, Isadora. Will you share with us how you felt growing up with your body hair? What led you to how you are now? Like what, how you've embraced your body hair? You were a big part of the, you were a big inspiration to me in letting my body hair grow out and really loving it and embracing it and honoring it for what it is instead of hating it for existing on me. Mm. I knew you were going to ask me a question (laughs) like that. And so for whatever reason, when I first stopped shaving that, like, I don't know what led me to it. It has kind of left my mind. So I'm going to try my best, but I'll start back from when I was a child and I am of Italian descent and we're rather fuzzy people and I had not like a heavy, heavy unibrow, but my eyebrows were on the bushier side. And I remember around fourth grade, I feel like becoming very conscious of my leg hair. And my mom told me that I couldn't shave until, I don't know, like eighth grade or something crazy. And this was around, I think, sixth grade. And other kids at school were starting to do it and talk about it. And so one day I just decided I was going to do it. I didn't want to wait till eighth grade. I thought that was absolutely absurd. And so I took my dad's razor and I shaved my legs one day. And it took a little while for my mom to notice. And then she was like kind of caught off guard, but she got over it quickly. But it was always the reason why was always, well, once you shave your legs, you can never stop. And you have to do it like every day and it gets all pokey and your hair gets, you know, it's just like, negative, 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 but I didn't care. I wanted smooth legs and body hair is weird. And then I remember discovering my first armpit hair a few years later. And like, I was excited kind of like with my bleed, I was excited. And I don't remember the first time I shaved my armpits. I don't remember it at all, but I did at some point when I guess I got a few more hairs. I don't know. I started shaving them because that's what you do. And I remember being a small child and going to a party and my uncle told me about this woman who was there and he's like, oh yeah, she's a total hippie. She doesn't shave her armpits or anything. And I met her and I like saw her armpit hair and I just was so enamored by her and I just loved it so much. I'm like, that's so cool. And I've always, I mean, I had a psychic reading with a person who does ancestral work and She told me that I had a past life back in like the flower power (laughs) age. And so I feel like I lived in that time. And so that's why I'm so drawn to it. But besides that, growing up, you know, through high school and everything, I was always very well-groomed and always smooth. And I enjoy the feeling of that. I really love like a nice, just like smooth, lotioned, yummy leg and I think about it now too like sometimes I miss that sometimes I miss just the feeling of being like sleek and soft and smooth and sexy but then you look into what goes into that and how exhausting it is and it's like "Mm, I'm good you know it's (laughs) it's really not worth it so uh, I think it's about two years ago I was just 
being introduced to people and getting to know people who were comfortable with their body hair and they weren't shaving or waxing and they were accepting it and just like rocking their life with body hair. And it was just so inspiring to me. And it gets you thinking, you know, when you see people empowered in their bodies, the way that they are, it gets you thinking about your own. And so I, I mean, I would go quite a while without shaving anyways, just because I was tired, you know, being a mother of children of any age and multiple children at that and showering rarely. It's just, you don't have time for it. Yeah. You just, that's very low on your priority list for me at least. And so I don't know. I just kind of worked myself up to it. And one day I was like, okay, that's it. I'm done. I'm not going to shave anymore. And there was that adjustment period of discomfort and, you know, wondering what my partner was going to think if it's like gross and he would always like make little silly jokes where he would like run his hand up my leg and then go, ouch, like it pricked him, you know, but that was even before like I decided to stop shaving. That would just be like if they were growing out for a few days and he's always made me feel insanely comfortable in my body. Like he, there's never been, so it was just like a silly thing that he would do. I didn't quite understand why, but it was just like, whatever, <laughs> you're not hurting my feelings. You're just being stupid. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure at the time there was so much more to it because whenever I do something, I do it with like my heart and soul attached. And so I'm sure at the time when I first stopped shaving my legs and my armpits, there was some like radical, rebellious, like amazing thing behind it. But now as like time passes, it's just me. It's just me loving my body. It was like the next step on my self-love journey, you know, of like loving myself the way that I am, exactly the way that I am. And setting that example for my girls, you know, I have three daughters. They can do whatever they want. I actually, my oldest is almost 10. And just a few weeks ago, she sat me down and said that, you know, she was afraid. She was afraid to talk about it with me because I don't believe what she believes or what she's feeling. You know, we're not in alignment. But she still was honest with me about her negative feelings towards her leg hair, which is exactly where I was at that exact same age. So just being a person in their life who shows them what it's like to radically love yourself, just to not give any amount of fucks, you know, of what society thinks of you and to not go along with societal expectations and just stand in your, in your power and own your body. And at the same time, being a person who can support them if they make different choices is very important for me too. So it was a beautiful conversation that evolved with her and she's wanting to shave her legs and I'm going to support her, of course, no matter what. I love that we can have these conversations. I remember her saying to me, like, I wish I was more like you where I just didn't care what people think about themselves. And that was such a powerful statement because like we were talking about earlier, I still do. You know, I think it's just a matter of being human. You care what other humans think. And it's just a matter of taking those thoughts into consideration, but just circling back around to what matters most to you. Because at the end of the day, you're the one that has to look yourself in the mirror. You're the one that has to pay your bills. You're the one that has to take care of your body and love your body. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Nobody else is going to live your life the way that makes you happiest. So it's okay for those thoughts to creep in. It's okay to be insecure. At the same time, what do you feel in your heart? What do you really want? I feel like that was a gnarly ass tangent, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's where I am with my body hair and my relationship with it. Who knows where I'm going to be in five years, 10 years, 20 years. I don't know. I get thoughts randomly of, like I mentioned earlier, wanting to shave my, I don't think I'll ever shave my armpits again. I fucking love my armpit hair. And I remember first shaving it and wondering, or first not shaving it and wondering what it was going to look like. What kind of armpit hair am I going to have? Because I never knew. I think before it was ever fully grown in, I was already shaving it. It came in thicker than I expected, more hair than I expected. It kind of sticks out when my arms sit a certain way. And so I was like, oh man, you know, like I'm hairy, <laughs> but it's okay. Like it's so, it's just, I just love it. So I don't think I'll ever shave my armpits again, but I often think of like shaving my legs just to get that smooth feeling. But then I also think of the whole process around that and no, thanks. No, thank you. And I realize we've been talking all this time or I have, I should say, cause I've been talking forever, but 
I've only mentioned armpit and leg hair and not pubic hair. So I'm going to just pause for a second because <laughs> I've done a lot of talking. And then maybe we'll dive into pubic hair too. Oh my goddess. A cunt, womb breathing. I was over here having a moment while you were talking because I text you body hair as the topic for this episode for a reason. I I feel like you were talking directly to my womb space when you were talking about your oldest coming to you and talking about talking to you about wanting to shave. I've been through my own roller coaster with body hair and when I was finally comfortable with rocking hairy legs and hairy armpits, I thought that that was it. I was good. I was solid in my security of just being, I love how you put it, fuzzy. (laughs) I am Mexican, so we also run fuzzy and I am lighter skinned, so my dark hair definitely stands out and I'm just thicker haired all over. my. You mention it, like my back, even my areolas have little hair sticking out and the one area that I was have always been comfortable with hair has been my cunt hair like I just for some reason I grew up thinking or having this perspective of if you're older and you have cunt hair then it should just be there because if you shave it off or if you get rid of it then you're trying to be younger than you really are the whole like young girl cunt that doesn't have hair. I don't know. It's just this weird perspective that has now changed and evolved. But thank you for sharing all of that. It really fed my womb something that it needed to kind of guide me towards the direct. It's like I'm at a fork in the road with my body hair again. And as much as I want to be frustrated, I can't because I have people like you in my life and that's why I feel it's so important for us to have the community and surround ourselves with healthy people instead of toxic people who are constantly judging you for how you look or the decisions you're making even though you're you're healthy and your family's healthy. I guess I, I'll dive into my experience growing up with body hair. I remember also being in middle school, going into middle school, Or actually, no, it was elementary school because I remember being nine and really wanting to shave my legs. And my mom said I couldn't shave until my quinceañera. And quinceañera, for those of you that don't know, is when a girl turns 15, they have a big party. It's kind of like an entry to quote unquote womanhood. But I was nine. I still had to wait six more years to get rid of my extremely hairy legs and you know get that smooth look and I never wore shorts I always wore sweaters and that's another thing I wore sweaters because I was always a huskier girl so it would quote unquote like hide my fat but I'll try and stick to body hair so I I would never wear shorts because the one time that I wore shorts I got made fun of so bad that it just left this this imprint in me that just no don't wear shorts until you can shave and there was a time where my mom asked me like why don't you ever wear shorts or aren't you hot in that it's a summer day and and yeah I was sweating but I didn't care because it protected me from the negative comments from other kids so I found a loophole (laughs) to get my legs smooth My aunt, one of my mom's sisters at that time was doing cosmetology school and so she had like the wax to wax and she came over to our house and I like filled her in on how I couldn't shave but I wanted to get rid of my body or like my leg hair and my armpit hair and my back hair at that and she's like, well, Let's just start doing it. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? My mom's going to kill me. So she ended up waxing my legs and she took the blame. Of course, my mom didn't care that she did it. It took my mom a while to get over the fact that I had nice, smooth legs. And her big thing also was once you start shaving, you're going to hate it after a while because you have to keep doing it. And at that time, I didn't care. I just wanted to get the bullies off my back. You know, I wanted to fit in with 
the girls that were shaving had been shaving for years or just, you know, just I wanted to fit in and not get bullied. And yeah, so I, it wasn't until maybe like last year, I think I had previously done it where I had grown out my armpit hair for like November or something for like a month to see if I could be comfortable with it. And the first time I remember doing it, growing out my armpit hair was very, very uncomfortable because I was very self-conscious and you can immediately tell when a person is just not comfortable in their body versus being comfortable and empowered. I love how you put it, Isadora, where you said when you surround yourself with people who are empowered or are very comfortable in their skin, it makes you start thinking about your own body and like, well, what areas can I work on to look and feel like that? Because there's something so sexy about an empowered person comfortable and completely honoring their body even if it's out of the norm of well that that wouldn't necessarily be sexy but they're rocking it and you can't help but just think sexy um but I digress and so I, I yeah last year it was a big deal and you mentioned also Isadora about you remembering there probably is like a more radical explanation to why you started allowing your body hair to grow back and just stay on your body. I remember when I first started growing out my leg hair, posting it on Instagram, oh, look at my hair, celebrate my hair. And it's like making such a big deal about growing out my body hair because it was a big deal then. And it's not normal in society for women to rock it like that. I think it's more common now because of social media, but you're still teeter-tottering on this like you're sexy, but you still get those awkward looks and it really just depends on where you're at and who you're around, but oh, there's so much to talk about around body hair and normalizing it, starting with ourselves and it's all in the eye of the beholder. My niece, I have a daughter, and then my niece, who is five, she's also very fuzzy and beautiful, but fuzzy. And I remember before I started grooming again, I saw her arm hair, and I said, oh, mamas, I love your arms. And she goes, what? Really? And I'm like, I love it. They look like my legs. Her little chin just pointed up a little bit more, and she looked more proud I don't think she she understands fully about what she's carrying on her skin, but I want to instill that in any young girl or any woman at that, that they are beautiful with or without hair. And I know, Isadora, you had mentioned in other episodes, high-fiving women who don't wear bras. I want to do the same for like women who just have hair you just acknowledge them and celebrate them out loud in front of people like you are rocking that and continue rocking that and you're an inspiration so thank you Mm, I love your story with your niece I love it so much like if there's anything that we can take away from this episode it's that it's encouraging young people and inspiring them to love certain parts of themselves that they may not and planting those seeds that they're perfect just the way that they are it's so important and it's so beautiful because at such young ages now there's insecurities and ridiculous ideas of what they're supposed to look like at, I don't know how old she was, but I remember my oldest daughter years ago, she's about to be 10, making comments about being fat, even though she wasn't. And regardless, like, it's just inappropriate to me. It's completely inappropriate. And it's only because she heard other people saying that about themselves. My extended family is not the most positive or self-loving. And I've had to really get in their faces about being mindful of how they speak about themselves, especially in front of my children. I mean, I don't want them to speak about themselves regardless of who's standing in front of them the way that they are. You know, I want to encourage everyone to just embrace who they are and love who they are, positives, negatives, whatever. Those are kind of an illusion, (laughs) you know? (laughs) It's beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you for sharing that story with us. 
Thank you. I feel like there's so much more to cover regarding body hair, such as different methods to get rid of your body hair and the experiences we have around that. And like you mentioned, pubic hair and so much more. But how do you feel moving into cycle time? Maybe we can come back to this topic at another episode or do you want to touch upon pubic hair first? I would love to do a part two. I think a part two to body hair would be super fun. Yeah. Let's jump into cycle time. Cycle time. (laughs) My whole day is full of jingles. I discovered this man at the farmer's market who sells avocados, and they are legitimately the best avocados I've ever had in my life. And every time I cut into one, I just like sing and dance about it in the kitchen. (laughs) My kids think I'm so silly, but yeah, I just jingle about things all day long. It makes life so much more interesting and happier. Why not? Why not sing your life away? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'm on day 10 and it's been an interesting 10 days. I think I mentioned this in our last episode too. Just I love rolling with the waves of the cycle. No two cycles look the same for me at least. And You know, I may be approaching ovulation season, but I'm not feeling ultra just like energized and juicy, which is what you're taught about ovulation season. You know, when you read most things, it's like, okay, ovulation, you're feeling juicy and you're feeling sexy and you're confident and you're just in your power and you're go, go, go. And I'm tired as fuck. Like, (laughs) I am really tired. My body is feeling really strange. I think I've got some internal things going on and I'm really not super juicy. I have my moments, but like overall, I'm just like uninterested right now and that's okay. There's something to this. There's a reason why I'm feeling this way and it's calling me, you know, being in day 10 and not feeling your typical standard pre-ovulation, ovulation. ovulation. Okay, well, let's go inward. Let's check this out. Like, why am I feeling lethargic? It's amazing. I'm constantly in awe of just our bodies and our female construct and just the messages that we receive. It's just so rad and beautiful. And I don't know. (laughs) That's it. That's where I'm at. Hmm, I love it. So I'm really happy to be back in flow of keeping track of your cycle and Fairlina cycle as far as like what days you are on because like today I I was on point I was like oh she's on day 10 and you know I'm like yeah I want to see how that's going it just feels so good because I feel like in keeping track of your cycle as far as the days it helps me stay on track with mine of like okay she's here because you you're part of this collective a part of such an important part of my life that having that knowledge about you, it it just makes sense. I feel like the puzzle just fits better. And um, so thank you. Thank you for sharing your cycle with me and with us and for helping keep me accountable for my own cycle. So thank you. I am on day 27. It just couldn't ring any more true that you said no two cycles are the same because that's just oxymoronic if I'm hopefully using the correct word for that, because we keep track of it. So essentially we're looking for patterns, yet they're not alike. I'm on day 27. My day 27 should look like this. However, I know I mentioned in our last episode, I had a 30-day cycle last cycle. My average is 43 days, and I did take the plan B pill last cycle And the last three weeks of this cycle were really rough. I had bad panic attacks that I thought I had outgrown years ago. And a lot was resurfacing. And there was a lot of messy feelings that I couldn't pinpoint what was going on or where they were coming from. And then all of a sudden, texting back and forth 
with you, Isadora, you asked me some questions and that dug up something that led me. It was like an open window and I was able to like crawl out and see something else and find more of an explanation, which the explanation was like, oh shit, I did take the plan B. What is plan B? Oh yeah, it's hormones. Oh yeah, that's going to alter my cycle and the way my body's working. And it reminded me of when I was going to take the plan B, I told my partner, I'm really happy this exists, this option exists. However, I feel like I'm being intruded on because I work so hard to stay in tune with my cycle that I know this is gonna fuck my whole shit up. I had totally forgotten those hormones kicked in like two weeks later and I was like, what is going on with me? I'm so lost in my cycle. And it wasn't, maybe it was what, maybe late last week where I was chatting with you and it just all made sense of, oh, this is kind of like a reset period. I have to get that pill and the hormones and everything it did to my body out of me. Being cognizant of that has allowed me to have so much more grace for myself and there's a light at the end of the tunnel like, no, I'm not crazy. I'm not falling back into depression. I'm not falling back into old habits that were detrimental to my health. And it's just the way it is. And life will continue. My flow will happen. I will get back into that flow. And just really being graceful with myself right now. And I think I'm in pre-death. It's super exciting to even think that because this whole cycle, I've been so whacked out. Like I have no clue where I'm at. I've been tracking every day, but I have no clue. And today was my first glimpse of I might know where I'm at because I just wanted to listen to women music and I male artist came to mind and I almost switched to his album and I'm like, no, wait, that doesn't even feel right with my womb. Like I need my sisters, I need, and I was so excited to record with you tonight. I feel like I'm coming back to my womb space, which I've been disconnected from. I feel I've been disconnected from for the last few weeks and I feel like the ebbs are kind of coming back down like I'm a guitar string that's being tuned in and I'm feeling better about myself and I feel like I'm breathing. And it's weird because I'm going into pre-death, which usually, like you said, ovulation, you're taught it's juicy time and pre-death, you're cranky, you're not in a good mood. And yet I feel like I'm coming back home. So it's it's been cool. Mm, oh my goodness. That gave me all the warm feels. I just loved all of that because your pre-death is typically rather extensive. And I can only imagine being in that state of mind, state of womb for so long can be extremely frustrating at times. But I'm loving that this is the season that's bringing you back to yourself and like having you fall in love with your womb all over again. It's just really magical. And there's some beautiful magic behind that I'm feeling. And what you were talking about with the plan B and how it is, plan B saved my life numerous times in high school. <laughs> and it is such a gift. And at the same time, is it also another tool to keep women from being in tune with themselves? Like it's one of those things, almost catch 22-ish. That totally makes sense. It's like you said, it's such a gift, but it threw me off completely. That kickball change step came in and it's like, oh my gosh, what is going on? But as soon as I was able to pinpoint what could have potentially been the reason as to why I'm so out of alignment with my womb, I just felt so much better. Like this weight lifted off my chest and my womb and I was able to communicate to my partner who was the one to help me through these really bad panic attacks. Like there was one where I was on the floor because I just couldn't, like I just couldn't get up from the anxiety and the panic and it was too much to handle. Like I seriously felt like I was going crazy. And it's funny because sometimes it takes other people and that's why it's so important to have your sisterhood. It takes other people to help you come back to your own womb. They might not even be doing it on purpose. It might be something that they said or a reflection or a story that was shared that awakened something within you to get you back to your womb. So that's why, again, our podcast, that's why it exists, like just sharing perspectives and stories and 
it might awaken something in someone and help them feel better or help them grow through whatever challenge they're going through. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Do you have a reflection read? I don't. Okay, well, I... That obviously is not a problem. <laughs> I... <laughs> I knew I could count on you. I thought of mine on the drive home after I text you the topic. And of course, it's from Indiari's song, I Am Not My Hair. And I know that in the song, she's mainly talking about her head hair. But the chorus is just so fitting. It says, I am not my hair. I am not this skin. I am not your expectations. No. I am not my hair. I am not this skin. I am the soul that lives within. Oh, just. Oof, womb tingles. India Re, hit us up. We want you on the podcast. I love her. Mm -hmm. I have for a long time. And when I was younger, I want to say in the 90s, I would hear music from her. And if, like at that point, I loved the music, but it, I didn't know her She's such a rad, empowered person. Mm -hmm. I love her. Yeah, she's she's amazing. She's just always been such a goddess in her own right. And there's so many women out there that mm, 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 just make me feel so good to be a woman. Self-love, yo. It's a powerful thing. Self-love equals human love. You know, when you feel good about yourself and you love yourself, you find things to love in other people. And mm -hmm. that's such a powerful thing. Your tolerance kind of raises because you know that they're just humans. I mean, I'm not going to go on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Announcements. Oh, wait, wait. I think we should do a womb breath. What do you think? Yes. Please. So womb am. breath master. <laughs> ah, I did a lot of womb breaths this past weekend. <laughs> I created a healing tent at an event and I did some energetic womb healings and there was a lot, a lot of womb breaths going on. Okay. Get yourself grounded where you are. If you can, close your eyes. Loosen up your jaw. Remove your tongue from the top of your mouth. Wiggle your shoulders. Relax. And we're going to take a big deep breath in and you're going to send it all the way down to your womb space. Ready? Feel all that beautiful energy swirling around. Release it. Get all this stagnant, dead energy out. Another deep breath in. Release it. Feel all that sparkle, that tingle, beautiful, alive energy in your womb, throughout your body, and go have a kind delicious day. Yes, I love it. I love it. When you said feel all that sparkle, I just thought unicorn farts. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> <laughs> My little one's obsessed with unicorns right now, so that's so why it's So are we, unicorn. all three of mine. They're magical beings. <laughs> they fart glitter, that's why. So thank you for those womb breaths. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And just some quick announcements per usual. I don't think there will be many people uh, linked in our show notes today, but please always support our people linked in our show notes. And we still have that felt cunt giveaway going on, which I don't think any of you, our listeners, have entered. So I highly recommend you leaving us some feedback on the platform that you listen to us on and if the platform doesn't have that option then go on to our instagram account which is c3.orgasm and leave us some feedback there or you can also even email us all we want is to hear from you we want you to engage with us because we feel you have something important to say to us and um, maybe a download to deliver is there anything you'd like to add do it just do it. Leave us some freaking feedback. 
okay? <laughs> we, ha- we have to strong arm you. We have to strong womb you. Then we will. Just do it. These felt cunts are amazing. And you know you want one. It would make a perfect ornament to like hang on <gasps> your tree over the holidays. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh or my hang gosh. from your rear view mirror so she's always on your mind. <laughs> So perfect. So Which perfect. I still need to get mine from you. Can you bring it on Saturday? Yes. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I will do that. And Farolina is waiting for hers too. Because one pussy is not enough. You know, just saying. No, not at all. <laughs> so thank you everyone for joining us. We appreciate you so much. And we just love you all. Love, love, love. Ovary. Out. Wait, wait. We didn't. <laughs> It's good for you to think, for you to think, for you to think.